Since 9th edition launched, Necron armies have been running rampant across gaming tables worldwide and the Necron Immortal is an important backline troop choice. So today, we're going to dive into some epic but really simple paint schemes for all six of the major Necron dynasties. The Immortals are such a striking figure within the hierarchy and aesthetics of the Necron forces. Their chrome silver carapace is utterly iconic, and unlike many Necron units, this bright steely silver appears on Immortals in a variety of dynasties and is simply augmented with accents that bring those Immortals in line with their overall scheme. So today we'll be looking at how to create some stunning Necron Immortals for the Sautek, Zarakan, Novok, Nylak, Mefrit, and Nefrek dynasties. This video video is also perfect if you're looking to get a taste of the look of each Necron sub-faction, so sit back, enjoy, and let's hit the bench. We'll be starting, of course, with the Sautek Dynasty, the original poster boys for the Necrons before those brassy Zarakan usurpers indomitus to their way into the lore. But these guys are an even more important starting point because the Sautek scheme is the foundation of every single one of our following Dynasty schemes, so everyone pay close attention here. I already did a deep dive on my Sautek painting scheme covering two different styles linked in the video above, but I'll give a super quick overview here as well. First, the model is primed in Lead Belcher or primed in Chaos Black and then given an all-over dry brush with Lead Belcher. The black in the recesses of the second method creates a more grimdark vibe with higher contrast, but personally for my Immortals, I opt for the first method to help make them stand out from the troops around them. To give our metalwork some real definition, we'll apply an all-over dry brush of Canoptic Alloy in a vertical manner, ensuring more of the alloy builds up on the higher parts of the model and the underside sides have more lead belcher showing through. To start defining the difference in the metalwork between the two core elements of these Necrons, the armoured carapace and the skeletal chassis underneath, we'll apply a much darker wash, basilicanum grey contrast to the chassis and a thin down mix of 50-50 Nuln oil and Lamian medium to all the armour plating. With those shades breaking up the two distinct regions, we'll really emphasise the incredible details of the armour with two steps of edge height highlighting first with Canoptic Alloy and then with Stormpost Silver. The first layer hits every single panel line aiming for absolute definition, whereas the second pass only accents the brighter spots that would be exposed to an overhead light source. With the metal work finished, we're left with a few key details that I'll whiz through here. Again, check the main scheme video for greater detail. The weapon and the spine are hit with some black Templar contrast and then dry brushed with a neutral grey. The green cabling is base coated in Caliban green and then wet blended with a mix of Caliban and Warpstone glow. The pulsating gorse weaponry is built up with a gradient of greys and white, which is then washed with Tesseract glow. We'll be sticking with this classic green gorse look for all of our dynasties today, but you can absolutely change this glow entirely just by swapping out the Tesseract glow for any of the other bright technical paints from GW, like Spirit Stone Red, for example, for the Novok dynasty. Now, this immortal we have will become the basis for our next five dynasties, but before we leave the world of the Sautek behind, we just need to add one little detail, some white scar across the crest of Steve the Immortal's head. There we go. Who's a good little Neko boy? All right, everyone say bye to Steve, there's only five Immortals in the box and we've got six schemes to paint up today, so Steve's soul is being painted over. He, he's a Necron, it's fine, he's used to it. So up next is my own beloved dynasty, the fearsome hordes of the Silent King himself, the Zarakan. and today we'll be doing something a little off script with our Zarakan Immortals. Rather than painting the whole model in brassy tones with the iconic silver on the shoulder pads like we see on the GW box art, I really wanted to create a bit more variety variety in my troops, so I'm opting to flip the scheme on its head and keep the Sautek silver for the majority of the model and instead bring the brassy Zarakan tones to the shoulder plates and the skull. Up first, I'll be heavily dry brushing Rune Lord Brass over the Lead Belcher Prime to establish those brassy undertones. You could base coat this if you like, but I always opt for a more varied metallic luster wherever possible to help achieve those realistic metal finishes. Then the plates are hit with a lighter dry brush of Canoptic Alloy, 
focusing on the higher regions of the metalwork. With the undertones down, it's time to break out the workhorse layer, Cryptek Armor Shade. Make sure you shake this really well and apply it sparingly across the armor. I've had a lot of comments from viewers about people saying that it, it dried much darker than in my previous videos when they've applied it too thickly, so be aware of that. Once that is fully dry, we'll bring back all of the edge detail with two layered edge highlights with our base tones, Rune Lord Brass, and then Canoptic Alloy. Once again, the final step is that white crest with layered white scar and cleaned up with Nuln Oil, and then our Sautex Steve has become the Zarakan Zeev. Up next is the bloodthirsty Novok dynasty with their vibrant red armor, the last remaining vestige of the elaborate blood rituals of their former life. Once again, we'll be keeping our Sautek body, applying the dynasty colors to our shoulder pads and the face of our immortal, starting with an all over base coat of corn red. This is applied evenly, but if you're wanting to get a bit more of that metallic luster coming through from the silver prime, you could alternatively use the flesh terror's red contrast as your base instead but I'm going for a nice flat coverage here so that we can have a look at how cool some matte color accents look against the metallic armor. Up next is an all over wash of Agrax Earthshade, which just always makes red tones look amazing. And this gives us some great recessed detail on the faceplate as well. To bring up the vibrancy of the red midtones, I'm going to layer highlight some Wazdaka red on the ray sections before two layers of edge highlighting to define the details. Bloody red is going down on almost every single single panel line, and Wild Rider Red is applied as a final accent to the very brightest highlight points. A quick white scar accent, and this is one angry looking immortal. Let's call him Bob. Now, who doesn't love Egyptian-themed Necrons? Well, meet Imhotep. He's about to get all blinged up to join the Nilak dynasty. These spooky Krons are a little bit more well-off in the dynasty pecking order and like to show off their wealth with a bit of a fancy scheme. So to start off, we're going to establish the golden armor color on our face and shoulder plates, and then we're going to look at some turquoise accents. A flat, even base coat of Retributor armor puts down our foundation and is then washed with the ultimate gold wash, Agrax Earthshade to give our recessed details some definition and make that gold luster really sing. Then all of our details are hit with two edge highlights. First up, an all-over accent with a 50-50 mix of Retributor armor and Stormhost silver, and then a tiny pop with pure Stormhost. The gold is now looking great, but we've got to move on to our all-important turquoise pop. We'll start off with Araman blue, which you can apply as little or, or as much as you like in any sort of pattern, even varying the pattern between squares. Squads. For me, I'm going to apply this to the crest of the Immortal and then put some simple banding over the golden shoulder pads. A quick targeted wash with Null Oil and then a layer highlight with Temple Guard Blue and Imhotep the Nilac Immortal is finished. Four down, two to go, and continuing with the gold and brass dynasties, up next we're tackling the Nefrek. The original golden boys before the Zarakan usurpers, this dynasty is obsessed with the golden light of their trinary star system that bathes their homeworld in solar radiance, and this theme is carried into the bronzy golden tones of their armor. We'll be starting with a Rune Lord brass base coat to give us a brassy tint in the shadows, and then overbrushing quite heavily with Retributor armor to create a great radiant up to pure gold through the mid-tones and highlights. This is then tinted with a Cryptek Armor Shade wash. Again, apply this nice and thinly, and then the final details of the model are brought to life with a Retributor Armor Edge highlight to all the panel lines to restore the pure golden tones to the highlights. White Scar Crest and Nefrek Jerry is ready for the battlefield. We have saved one of the absolute best to last, the almighty Mefri dynasty. When these crazy crons aren't annihilating entire planets for the Silent King, they're kicking about in some bitching dark green armor that is incredibly visually distinct and steals all the spotlight at any inter-dynasty dinner parties. Up first is an all-over base of Deathworld Forest, again opting for a matte look here, but you could dry brush this over the lead belcher to keep that metallic luster to help tint the recesses and create a nice color gradient. We're washing the 
the entire surface with Coelia green shade, but then wick it away from the high points of the model. And then to finish it off, we've got two edge highlights. First up, a 50-50 mix of Death World Forest and Zamizi Desert, and then a final pop with pure Zamizi Desert. A white scar accent to the faceplate to get some nice green and white pop, and Mefri Merv is ready to rain death upon any foes of the Silent King. With our six schemes finished, rest in peace, Sautech Steve. It's time to get these guys based. As always, we'll be using the incredible Geek Gaming base ready mixes, which are super simple to apply and look fantastic straight out of the packet. With five immortals, I thought I'd experiment with five different mixes to really give each of these models their own flavor. So I've opted for some mixes perfect for the world of Warhammer 40K. Grimdark City Rubble, Grimdark Tomb World, Mars Earth, Desert Sand and Stone, and Snow Powder. A layer of fast drying basing glue, let that get tacky for 10 minutes, and then a quick dip into the mixture, and Bob's your uncle. Sometimes it's nice to get some perfect rock placement with a pair of tweezers, but the random dip is just as fun. Then leave all of them for half an hour so the glue can grab, and then give them a spray or a pipette with matte scenic sealant. All of these products are available from my shop, zobzob.com, down in the description below. Now I have to admit, I fully intended to repaint and rebase these guys to match my Zarakan arm, after the tutorial, but Zeev, Bob, Imhotep, Jerry, and Merv have absolutely stolen my heart, and I think I've got to make them a retinue for my royal warden. Maybe they're little emissaries to the Silent King from other Necron dynasties, or maybe they're just on their way to a dinner party. I don't know, I don't care, they look badass, they're like the Necron A-team, and I'm 100% giving them some custom special rules in our upcoming narrative campaign. So stay tuned to see these guys wreck face on the battlefield, and there we have six dynasties six immortals, six schemes. I hope that was helpful. Well, five immortals, actually. I hope that was helpful for you guys. And be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more 40k content coming soon. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions or any other Necron videos you'd love to see. A huge shout out to my boy Joshy Summers who made this whole video possible and got me the Necron Christmas bundle for Chrissy after it sold out in Australia in like four minutes. Hopefully we'll be able to see the rest of the box in some future videos. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. This one.